Hey, hello. Maybe I should do video, I'm not sure. Uh, and then I'm gonna share the screen. So should we do any intro here or just- Yeah, let's do our little recap of what we are doing. Yeah, so right now we're just trying to uh, together figure out how to create a very simple command K palette, command palette interface for a screen bar prototype thing for a new dashboard. Um, we started out creating a command palette tag, and then we have a global store where we added some properties for the palette uh, in the global state, essentially. But that, and we had some conditionals here with whether or not to show the palette, blah, blah, blah. And then Matthias came up with the idea of instead of using this tag here, we could actually create a class for the palette, have all the related state properties here. And then in the global store, we essentially just have a property where we create uh, an instance of this palette. And the way this works now, which is nice, is that it uses, so in Imba, some alpha in Imba, I think it's not that long ago, we introduced the ability to return um, memoized DOM elements and trees from any property or getter, getter or function. So on the palette class, we have a getter called the dollar sign view it's just a convention we're using now we didn't wouldn't have to use the dollar sign where it essentially says that unless the palette class is visible we're going to just return a div with a hotkey meta k that is going to call show and show sets visible yes and if it's visible we're going to return a full um, element with a header and a bunch of children and inside of the app which is at the root level of the application we simply just include the view using this syntax. So you have this, uh, the, the uh, angles, angle brackets, and then a parentheses. And inside of here, you can refer to a getter or call a function that returns any sort of view. And if the view inside changes dynamically, just like it changes between these two, uh, it will still like swap that out as well. So this is where we are at now. And we just decided that we should try to uh, should try to um, um, save this, uh, uh, record this, in in case someone else is interested in seeing how how we end what we end up up with and how we're, how we're uh, going to do it. So just looking at the example now, pressing S hides it, pressing Command K shows it again, and obviously the search doesn't do anything. If I click search, you will see that it logs do the search. So inside of this method here, we can do the search. So my idea now is that we have palette.items, which inclu includes all the models in our project. Um, and I'm actually going to uh, add a separate value that is just called hits. And I'm gonna have that empty to begin with. And I'm just gonna loop through the hits. So as you can see here, there are no hits now. I can move this over here so that we can actually so, show the example. Before we continue, uh, re real quick, uh, two things that in inspired this, which I think yeah. is useful to take a look at in the code base. If you go back to app and you go up to line 120 something, um, right above you can see head and body uh, yeah. for 126, 127. Uh, yeah. it's, quite interesting how it's kind of deferring parts of the rendering this way. And we, we also have, um, so that, that was one part which I thought was interesting. And you, you can see the old way of the search box with if querying the, yeah. uh, there. Um, the other thing is if you go to models, I think, and you look at entity or the things that inherit from it, you yeah. can see the, the get dollar li or these kind of things. Uh, it's the way the kind of the class should behave when you're trying to render it. And this was the main inspiration the first time I think I saw it when we went through it. And I think it's a very clean way because you're essentially saying that this is a class. Think of it as a class, all, all your regular way of treating classes, especially when it comes to owning its own state, knowing how to operate on it, uh, behaving uh, in reaction to it. But then you expand it a little bit by saying that also know how you should render yourself. And so you're kind of in inverse, like it's the inverse of doing lots of additional logic that's actually presentation. And you're saying yeah. just 
put the presentation in one of the getters or methods. So that was yeah. the initial uh, thought behind it. So a pretty cool, just as a tiny example of how you could use that. I'm not saying it's something you would do, but in, in addition to get view here, we could define a get um, my or menu item, which is essentially, oh, so if we want to render this somewhere in the menu, we can do it that, like this, like palette searching for <laughs> QR. Really? And then if we go to app here, you can see the app, we show the store palette view here. And inside of the aside here, we can also show the MY here. And if we go now, you can see that it's showing there. And when we change something, it's actually updating. So it's essentially you have state for multiple views. You have a global sort of class that, that keeps uh, track of, of multiple uh, view representations. And these are not singletons. So it's important to understand that with this syntax here that we added in Imba, you can actually do these many places and it will create um, one item at each place and they will retain their context and still be memoized so that the performance is still good. Um, so yeah, I can remove those. One, one way you use this just to wrap that whole digression off. Yep. I think one way you used this was to have um, specific, like you you can add classes to that, right? Because you're, you're opening a, a tag and, and uh, just because we're writing it as uh, just item uh, dot dollar page or something, doesn't yep. mean you can't do extra things. So for example, line 174 that you're on right now, that has a property. And so it may be that, that that's not used elsewhere, but here we're saying that it has a property. And we're also adding the, the yeah, for. Yeah. Uh, so let's remove that. So the next step now is now we're not showing any hits, right? Uh, a, a, a naive way to do this would be that when you search for something, you can essentially check that for item in items, uh, filter do one name um, index of, if there is a name, index of query. So this is uh, this says that when we render the items, we're filtering them and just showing the items uh, where the query is, is represented inside of the name of the item. So now we can see uh, it works because of the, the blank query is in everywhere. But if I do some here, you see that it shows zombie. If I do grid tutorial, you see that it shows all of these. So this is a basic search. But one problem with this that you don't really see now is that uh, I could even instead of inside of filter air, I could actually do uh, I could do it in a condition instead, but um, the whole thing is that whenever we call render, so essentially whenever Imba commit is called, it will re-render this view. And since the filtering is part of the view rendering itself, it starts slowing down. So even if this filter here is, is not really expensive, it will have to filter the items and do a bunch of curing every time you render. And that's kind of against the philosophy of Imba uh, because the idea is that in Imba, you're supposed to be able to render your application a million times per second, essentially. But whenever you introduce expensive computations or things that you do inside of the render loop, then it suddenly becomes much slower. So it's still fast, but it's probably a hundred times slower than it was. And the main reason is that in a regular Imba uh, rendering loop, when you don't have any additional logic, it does the bare minimum. So it, it, it really, it's really careful not to even create any stray arrays or objects that are discarded after a, a render loop because it tries to create no garbage and it tries to be just as fast as, as uh, possible. And whenever you introduce things like this, there will become like this filtering here will create garbage for the garbage collector there will be some, some uh, computation latencies to the rendering. So it will go down from being able to render a million times per second to maybe a thousand times per second. And even if a thousand times is still pretty good, 
if you have a lot of these things in your app, it's starting to bog things down, especially when this type of search becomes more complex. So what we want to do now is that we, we want to make this uh, curing happen asynchronously. So we're just going to filter on hits and only show the hits. And since we're binding to the query here, I'm going to show you a, a, a new feature of Imba, uh, which is also released in one of the latest alphas, which is a very minimal type of uh, observable pattern. So I'm going to make this query observable. Right now, that doesn't change anything. It's still like, OK, so it's just setting the query, right? Uh, just to show that it works, I'm going to do the results for and then the query. Blah, blah, blah. So I now want to call. So when I call search, then we can do hits equals items filter do uh, one name index of query like this. So right now, it doesn't work live, but at least if I do like this and click search, then it calls the search method and returns the results. So that's wor working well, but we want to call that multiple times. One way we could do it is to actually do like input throttle 500 milliseconds. That's quite a lot, I think, and then do search. Uh, that's one way. So let's try that. So. So it will essentially just after 500 milliseconds uh, uh, call search. But this is also not good. Like it is okay, uh, and we don't need a query bit to, to be observable even. But if it's more complex, imagine you have multiple queries, you have some filters, like you're filtering on some categories or something, then you want to start uh, being able to observe whenever one of the properties change, and then update the things. So instead of throttling this, I'm going to just do auto run. I'm to be honest, I'm seriously not certain if this is going to work. Uh, but the idea here is that auto run is a function that will always be called. Um, it will immediately be called when the class initiates. And then after that, it will always call itself automatically if any of the observable properties uh, are referenced in the in in the method, so it could have been. Uh, I'm just for for simplicity doing this here. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm so interested in seeing whether or not this works. Uh, you saw that it actually called do the search asynchronously with a blank query. So I'm kind of. Uh, wondering why it does not uh, show the results here. I would have thought that it should have shown everything. Maybe it's because this happened. Yeah, this happened before any Imba commit. So that's kind of auto run is inside of classes is not currently calling Imba commit automatically. That's something to remember and document or change. But yeah, so now it should be this way that when yeah, you saw that it worked. So when the query actually changes, this observable here changes, and that makes this auto run function automatically call. So uh, if you want to make this more a bit more complex, uh, we don't want to use a plain query, a plain string to do the curing. So instead, we want to have a um, have a uh, regex for this query. So I'm going to do get regex, um, which, uh, if I remember correctly, we're going to do new regex and then the Q and then I. Isn't that case insensitive? I think it is. And then we're going to do name uh, match. See now, whoops, can't read properties of undefined reading match. Yeah, that's because some of the models don't have a name. It's just a weird thing. So now it works. And since it's case insensitive now, 
it's not case insensitive now. <laughs> um, let's see. Is ah, I'm not doing the regex. I'm actually this was what I was supposed to do. Uh, but you will see now that even. So now it just returned a blank, but if I do HTML, you will see that it's case insensitive. And it's still auto running every time the query changes, even if we're not referencing the query inside of here, right? And the reason for this again is that um, we are calling regex or we're accessing regex inside of here, and regex in turn actually accesses an observable property. So this is the way MobX works internally it's like it's actually tracking all the nested dependencies and then making sure to to uh, call actions and reactions whenever any of them changes but if you will but one side effect here is that if you see the regex that i uh, that i check here and just compare regex to regex so this is essentially in, in javascript javascript like doing this you will see that that returns false and the reason for this is that every time we get this regex uh, it will uh, actually return a new regular expression. And we could have done like this, like actually like caching it, but that destroys the whole purpose because when the query changes, then this regex does not change. So this is where computed properties comes in. So if I do computed regex, then this is also a pattern from Obex where instead of a regular observable property, this will essentially track everything it depends on and only when the dependencies change it will kind of uh, update invalidate its cached version and whenever i return return from this multiple times if the query hasn't changed it will always return the same regex this is also important to make this much more performant right so just to illustrate if yeah. we change the regex to to uppercase and yeah. then you change from some B to some B with the uppercase, like the, the search wouldn't run twice, right? Uh, so you can see the search will now run twice because the regex actually changed. Yeah, but if it was just a simple string, it wouldn't actually be called twice, right? Uh, what do you mean? So if you go to computed regex and yeah. change it to re uh, like query to uppercase, no, no, uh, without the regex, just return uh, yeah. the string query to uppercase. Uh, I, I know where you're going, but to be honest, it's actually going to uh, still update. But, get query. but yeah, I think it's because the input. What, what if you select the character and then type it in instead of backspacing it? So if you if you mark it and then press S or mark it and press Shift yeah. S. Yeah, but the, the whole point here, just the thing is that if the regex changes, um, I guess this is what you mean, like get a normalized query, which returns this. And then I use this. Does this get to your point? What I haven't gotten to yet is that some of these things will not work as in MobX. So it's a bit more lazy. So it doesn't do comparisons, necessarily comparisons on the output of the computers. So if properties inside of this changes, um, for strings, I guess it does, but it, it doesn't always... Uh, check the new value of the normalized and see if that's going to fire. I'll see, like, console, uh, warn, recomputed regex. Uh, I think now we are actually having some, no, we're not. Uh, and I do zombie, you'll see the recomputed the regex in, in MobX. When I change uh, the casing of the query, the normalized query should still be the same. And theoretically, it should then see that, oh, so there's nothing to recompute in the regex. But here it actually does still. Uh, and that's because we don't do these comparisons. And one of the reasons for it is that 
it's kind of expensive. The, the main reason is that I haven't implemented it yet. But another reason, if I were to come up with a reason, is that uh, since InBuy is so fast, we're not, we don't want to have an observable pattern where we have to make sure that things only update always whenever something has completely, definitely changed. That's not important to us. But what's important to us is, is to not redo every damn thing on every render. So it doesn't matter to us if, if the query or the filtering is called twice instead of once somewhere. Yeah. It, it matters that it's not called on every render. That's the whole thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was there anything? Yeah, should we just try for fun now to actually uh, 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 to actually uh, implement the categories? Uh, one oh. question about line thirty. So you you have a when i less than twenty, and yeah. for me that that kind of stands out as something that's still logic in the uh, markup. Yeah. Is Something that would make sense to do in the search call, like in the search method, that you would limit it there rather than limiting it in the. In the so market. ideally, in in the world where we have the command palette, I would probably either filter it out here after we've sorted by weight and stuff, and say like we're not going to show more than the first thousand items, yeah. or I would probably more likely instead of just rendering all of these directly. I would implement a infinite scrollable view that actually just automatically renders the first 20 items or the first items that are visible and then reuses the views and allows you to render through even if there are 10,000 results. Um, so that's how uh, uh, Git speak works today, uh, which uses some of these things. So if you have these item here, items here, I think if I, this is a list of issues when I just do hash. And as you can see, you can scroll through all of them and there are probably a thousand issues here. Uh, but this is just using a re reusable, uh, recyclable list view. And it's the same thing here. If I remove all the filters, this is just yeah. using a reusable uh, filter for all of these uh, items. Makes sense. Yeah. But in, in, uh, from, from kind of a technical perspective, uh, um, uh, we shouldn't be doing anything um, like we shouldn't create temporary like garbage for the garbage collector in the markup. That's bad. But yeah. having the when clause wouldn't do anything bad like that. No, it's it's uh, no, it wouldn't. Like it would actually just break from the for loop when the the int is at that point. So that wouldn't do anything. But at the same time, as I kind of agree that from a theoretical standpoint, it's it's not supposed to be there anyway. It might it might be supposed to be there if you do like uh, when i is less than max results or whatever, and that's a property that you can configure on this palette. But I totally agree. the The less logic you have inside of the the tree, yeah. um, the better. Or or the at least the less things that you actually compute and do yeah. uh, during rendering is is better. So let's try. Um, yeah, for, for when we get to the topics, so after. Yeah. Um, I would love to, to see if it's something that makes sense to live in models, because we, we don't really, like, when we deal with all of these things from the rendering perspective, <laughs> yeah. we don't deal with them as, here is my list of models or entities. We deal with them as trees. And so it's the model itself that knows what its children are and what how to order them for items, for example, if you have that. And so uh, for me, it made sense that uh, each entity itself would know what to get. And, and we have a, a pretty clean system because we have a hub at the top. And so the same thing, it's kind of turtles all the way down in, in the sense that you can treat them the same way. And so yeah. for, for me, it would make sense that this is something that lives on the model, but uh, I kind of agree. But at the same time, like if you have in IO, when you search for something, it th this is also a, a hierarchy, like where you have 
So it sort of also makes sense if you have the weighting and the scoring right, it sort of also makes sense to just treat everything as a list where it will match everything and not even care about grouping it to the parents and stuff. So I'm thinking for the global search in the Scrimba case here, it might make sense if you just do HTML, it will first show the courses that match and then the individual scrims or something based on some, some sorting uh, criteria, maybe. But uh, I think part of the reason why, yeah, I, I didn't quite explain why, but I think part of the reason is when we get to the point where we have a, a, a search that matters because it's an important tag. So let's say it's um, a map, like array map. That's not something that you're going to get a hit on in the topic or in the course, but it's something that would be in the scrim, but it may not even be in the scrim name. It may be in the kind of the tag of what is part of the scrim. But yeah. when you look for that, it's not necessarily correct to show the perfect match at the bottom of that tree. Yeah. Because it may be that you want to you want to understand where can I learn about math and then get all the scrims or get all the, the courses. And so yeah. if we go the approach of everything is flat, either match or don't match, then we lose part of the value of the tree structure that we have. Right? Yeah, so, so I think I'm, I kind of misspoke. So the idea is not to do the matching here directly. It would obviously to be like match or matches or something for the individual items. And then for the parents, like you have a course, then it makes sense for the parent match function to actually include keywords and various things from their children automatically. I think uh, we're talking about the same for thing. The yeah. There is a, a search on the entity. That yeah. So sense. then just, just we, we can try to just remake that now just for fun. So instead of doing the na direct name matching, we're just going to call match on the models. And let's... Well, it has that right from the from my search. Yeah, it's called search for you, and it does a lot of additional things like a, a nested array. So just for the thing here, uh, query. Uh, now it's a regex, but it might not be. Uh, return true if name match query. Uh, I'm just gonna test it out now. So uh, we did it this way. So we do filter here we just gonna see that that works before we no that doesn't work match is not the function so the items uh i guess so let's say we have we're now showing in in the model.all we're actually including both the relationships and the model so it's kind of like weird that way so we should obviously it's it's not only including entities um so for now we can do it this simple way where we just do uh, one is a entity and match, right? So then it should work for Scrimba, blah, blah, blah. Right now it works fast enough to be instant, but in auto run, you could also do modifiers, sort of modifiers. I don't have a syntax for it yet, but it's like delay root MS. Then or one second just to uh, to do to show it more clearly. Then it would basically delay anything. So whenever any of the things inside of the order run changes, it will queue and say, "Hey, fire this in one second. But if anything changes again within those thousand milliseconds, it will kind of delay the calling of the order run uh, perpetually. So. If we wanted to do filtering, like real quick, we have these different models. So we have scrims and we have courses. And let's say now we have, uh, now we, you see that we show everything. And for fun, I guess. So first uh, we can try to do one cool thing. So instead of doing div item.name, let's say we define, we want to have a specific, a special type of, of uh, element to show in results. So I can be explicit here. So I can say item dot. Um, I'm inclined to use these really short names, but do you have a suggestion for a non-short descriptive name? Result hit hit, <laughs> hit that's short. Yeah, I love it. 
<laughs> so item hit and then on the models for the entity we're actually going to just define this here get hit and then we're going to just use div name one thing i really like about this sort of pattern is that it's even more con condensed than uh, the regular custom components because the context here is actually the data itself so instead of doing data.name if data blah 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 everywhere you're actually yeah. accessing the properties directly yeah uh so i'm gonna do uh, item name so we're gonna just see that that works yeah item blah, blah blah and what's cool then is that if we have a scrim here which is a different type then we do the scrim and you can have all sorts of logic here as well right so now for the screams are going to look differently uh the the items the users and the hubs and whatever are looking uh are showing the original so this is an easy way to override views for different types of models or types of objects yeah. um so what i want to do now is to and since we're using this syntax we can actually add both styles here and classes and properties directly and if this was a method we could also insert like actually call it with something so uh this is a really bad thing to call it with but instead of having a getter here for hit i would do def hit and uh query item for this is really not how you should do it but then you will see that yeah <clears throat> It actually more like, interesting is to use some of the state that is sort of not in the class now. So the I, the like making alternate colors per per item in the list. Yeah. Oh, oh good yeah. idea. Yeah. Good idea. For stuff like that, I for for alternate co colors, I would just use CSS though, but with odd and even. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. Like when you do it outside of the class yeah, yeah. itself, you would that's do nice. it. In, yeah. So instead of calling. I want to use getters for now because there's no real no use to need to do anything else. So as you said, it's a very good idea. So uh, bg at odd uh, gray two. Isn't that wouldn't that be right? Yeah. And I'm going to add some padding px three p y one and maybe even r d m d. So now we've made it like this. I'm going to do gray one instead um now we added some something that starts to look kind of like a a view here uh yeah i wanted to add filters so inside of this header here we can do uh let's say we have these models we don't have a good representation of them so we're gonna do um let's say i'm actually going to do uh const models uh or model types and i'll do again just for the testing i'm going to use a race i guess or uh type uh rim import whoops scrim the tooling is not working that well always uh, and the user is not exported uh, it is exported. That's weird. Uh, but it's global. Like ah, it's work. because it, this is also a bug. I, I'll also import it as a type. So type scrim uh, name scrim blah, blah, blah. Type user name uh, user. So this, I'm going to clean this up later, but the whole idea now is that we do. Um, after the header, we're going to do uh, dev for item for type in model types. We're going to do uh, label checkbox uh, bind type. No, bind uh, to types and bind to types, and the value should be the type, I think. I'm just going to see if that works and uh, the value should be just the type name 
So now we see Scrim and user. And if I check one of them, I should see if I go to store, which is a global thing, palette, and then types. Yeah, it includes that one thing. And if I change it, it includes both, etc. So now inside. What's with the slash at the end of the input? It's just to say that it's closed. So it's a way to allow adding a separate argument after that. So if I try to do this, that wouldn't work because a input can't have children. So instead of doing this, essentially, it's just a shorter way to, to okay. yeah. Um, so now I'm showing both scrims and uh, users. I'm also going to add course just for fun. Uh, isn't course a thing? It's not exported, so uh, course, uh, course. <coughs> I'm just gonna make sure that exported. We're not gonna do them globally anymore, but that's just from from old. So the the stream is lagging a bit too much for me to to follow along. But uh, one thing we're soon gonna come across, which yep. I think is really interesting, is um, that. Uh, you're going to want to be able to search for something that a uh, scrim in a course has, but the course name itself doesn't have. And so yeah. it would be the, the content uh, that the, the, like the course knows that its children has a hit. And so it should show itself. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's so in this primitive thing, this is ending up more as a kind of an imba tutorial. So in this primitive thing, it won't really take any of that into account. Now, I'm just going to first try to do the model type thing. So the idea here is that inside of search, we're going to do over oh, first filtering on the thing. Um, no, first, we're going to just do hits items. And then if uh, types length, we're going to do hits, uh, hits, filter, do, um, types. We all, we, yeah, uh, sorry for interrupting. We, we already have this functionality in my search. So if you just like unwrap the array you get, then the, or if you have any hits on dot search, then that functionality would work. Yeah. Just, uh, I just to let you follow follow along here. So when we have some types inside of the array, th these are just of this uh, pattern here. Then we check that we're actually going to filter the hits on where some of the values inside of type is the is the constructor for the for the items. I'm not sure if this works, but it's uh, this doesn't work until I do this. I'm just going to see if that kind of works. So when we do this now, nothing will happen because we haven't run the search again, because types is not observable. If I click search again, it's only going to show the scrims. And if I do this, it's only going to show the users, which is a single one in this case. So to connect that as well to the, to the auto run search, the only thing I need to do is to make sure that the, the types is observable, right? So now since the types is observable, it runs automatically. I'm going to remove the auto run delay. And now, it actually like instantly filters just on the types on the on the things, um, and so an idea we're not going to explore here is that instead of doing these ugly things, I really like the idea of having the types themselves be kind of rich objects, so that you would you would rather say that you only include the types like you actually you would actually do this course user and remove the type and then actually have like real input for them. I think this will probably work out of the box because type.name does exist, I guess, without the plural. Um, so that simplifies things a bit. But I, what I really like is to have kind of a representation of even the models as uh, items that you can deal with and interact with and, and handle so that you can on the model level, define like this is the icon for this uh, type of uh, uh, this is the icon for this type. This is the, the description for this type, and then even also create these um, 
these uh, view properties on the types themselves. So theoretically, I think that should work now as well, but I'm not completely sure that you could do static. Um, uh, filter, whatever, and then do uh, div blah, blah. Uh, uh, okay, so this is gonna, gonna be very, if this works, I will actually be surprised. Um, and it's not something I would usually do, but let's say we go through the type and we just do type filter as a method and we include um, the types inside of there. And when we go here, I'm going to do as a method and it's array. And we're going to return something that binds to the array. This is what I, I don't think will work. And value will be self and the thing here will be name. It's probably not going to work. Um, Hey, it works. <laughs> so uh, this is a way then, so, so the cool thing about that is that for every entity type, you can essentially override that. So just for the scrim type, um, I wanna do like, uh, hey. And then you will see just for that scrim type there, it actually changes, uh, it's, it's rendering differently. This is kind of approaching where you treat the data as, or the or the types as data, so everything is data, uh, and can be interacted with and and uh, handled. Yeah. Can you explain a bit? Like I got lost in the. <laughs> so what should I explain? <laughs> yeah. How does like bind array value self? Like how does it uh, actually? Yeah, I can try to step work. through that. So. We have some types there. I don't even need to include them to create that there just to make it easier to understand. For all of these classes, which are types like classes in our model layer, we essentially render an item for each of them, which is a functional component, I guess, kind of like in React, where I call, I just expect all of the models to have a static method called dollar sign filter. And since I need these to do something rich with this context, I'm also passing in the types array there. And inside of this filter, I'm actually returning a label and an input checkbox. And the array that I get into the function, I say that, oh, so the check uh, checkbox should bind to this array. And how that works is essentially that when the checkbox is checked or unchecked, it will make sure to remove and add the value uh, property of the checkbox to the array. Maybe, so this, maybe uh, we could represent it as an icon since the uh, extent it has a, a, a actual value right away, because it would be really, that that's what I think it would be. What as an icon? Uh, the, the, the class, right? Yeah. Because okay. if the, if the data can be represented as yeah. like dot dollar icon, then this would, give us two places where it's useful first um, yep. in the row rendering itself so rendering a search yep. hit, but also as a way to explain that you are filtering by this icon right so if you click the yep. icon that's all that's the ones you see so i'm going to show you something fancy now so svg i'm, I'm creating a static uh, getter called dollar sign icon which is going to return an SVG and the SRC is going to be, this is the tooling from, from Imba, a code icon. When I click enter it, you show that it shows up as import everything from code icons that isn't installed yet. So I'm actually going to uh, do that. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, I have to move this bar here. I'm so uh, glad we're recording this because all I yeah. can see is your mouse cursor. <laughs> everything <laughs> else is like, Half a minute okay. behind. <laughs> so I just installed code icons and it even has completions. So if you see here, it should even have a preview. So let's say this is the icon for every, by default, this is the icon for every entity. So inside of the label here, I'm actually going to uh, include the icon. 
I'm to be honest, I'm actually surprised myself if all of this works all the time, but I'm sure we're bound to find something that doesn't work. So yeah, it showed up on course and on user, not on scrim, but the reason for that is obviously that scrim includes a different def for the filters. But I'm not gonna, I don't want to do that anymore, but I do want to have a different icon. So is that a get icon? I'm gonna do SVG, SRC, codicons, and then uh, TV maybe, play, play circle. I guess that's good. And now we can see it has a different icon for the play. And the cool thing again then is that in the app now, in the uh, item, the general entity item, let's say I can actually just do data dot icon here. And now you will see that we have, I need to hide this menu here. Don't we have this here? What's the, ah, it's the icon is for the static type. It's not for the, for the, um, for the each individual like, uh, item. So that's kind of, we have to decide how to do that with the types and the whatever, like the, which pattern we not need to want to do. But it's essentially, uh, maybe it's good enough to just do self-constructor icon, I guess. So unless you override the icon property on the individual instances, it will just call the, uh, the model constructor instead. But I'm not completely certain that that will work. But it did, again. So yeah. So now <laughs> we have... We're, like... we're lacking some on the static uh, keyword. Yeah. That uh, I, I haven't used that or... Yeah. Not much about it. So this is a way I, I don't want people to go completely ballistic with this type of functionality because you can easily find yourself in a huge mess. It's very easy to entangle the views way too much with the with the data and the models in your project. But at the same time, it is very convenient. It allows you to do a lot of dynamic things, um, especially with the overrides for different uh, different types, I guess. So should we stop the recording now or just continue as if this was a regular meeting and then? I think this was, this was a good recording. Yeah, I'll stop sharing for now just to also stop the recording.